Hello there, Ms. Bunting here, St. Kilt St. Gregory's, and I'd like to talk you through a few strategies that you can use at home to help support pupils with their learning at home. We at school recognise that there have been so many challenges um, over the past few weeks and so many changes implemented as well, and that online learning provision is a significant challenge for many families. We know that many families have multiple children working from home at any one time, and that many of you parents are working from home yourselves and perhaps not able to support children as closely as they need to be supported. We are really grateful for the way in which you've adapted so quickly to the changes, and we do want to offer support if things aren't quite running smoothly at this point in time. So we understand that your child might be having difficulties related to their learning. And these difficulties might be related to an engagement and attention. We know that for many children, home is a place for relaxing, playing and spending time with family. So that transition to experiencing home as a place of learning might be quite tricky for some children. Some children might refuse to engage with online learning or it might be quite difficult to persuade them to get started in the morning. We also appreciate that for some children, there's a barrier to understanding the instructions. Perhaps for these children, watching the video and reading the instructions isn't quite setting them up to, do, to, to be able to do the task. So they might need a little bit more support to fully understand what is expected of them. And we know that independence is another barrier for our learners, particularly our, our younger pupils, and that many children require adults support, an adult to sit with them to help navigate through the technology or perhaps to keep them on track as they engage with, this, with the tasks set. And finally, we know that for some pupils, producing work, whether marking up the worksheet set by the teacher or completing a written task by hand or by typing, can be really challenging for some pupils without the direct and continuing support of the teacher. We are doing our very best at school to address these difficulties and to make the content as accessible and appropriate as possible. But in the following slides, I'll give an overview of how to tackle some of these common issues at home. So for our younger children, it can be useful to start the day with a visual timetable. A suggestion would be to prepare using pictures a timetable for the day, including breaks and lunch to help the child to know what is happening and what to expect later. A more simplified version of this is a now and next chart, which introduces just two activities at a time, what is happening now and what is happening next. And it can be helpful to include a preferred activity as the next task in order to motivate a child to do a non-preferred activity first. So for example, now maths, next Lego. Likewise, it can be useful to help your, to let your child know that a break will be concluding and next might be a learning activity. Another useful strategy is to use a timer, something like a, something visual like an egg timer or a sand timer if you have one, or you could use a mobile phone timer to indicate that the task will come to an end. And this can be really useful to help children to move on from a preferred activity as they have plenty of advanced warning to get used to the idea of moving on. Another good suggestion is to try to use concrete materials wherever possible. So paper and pens or a whiteboard can be preferred over typing directly onto a document. A photograph can then be uploaded so the teacher can see what has been completed. For maths tasks, it can be helpful to use counters. If you don't have any ready-made counters, then using something from around the house like pegs, coins, buttons, or even dried beans can be really effective, and many parents are doing this already. Accessing audiobooks can be also really effective, particularly for children who get quite fatigued from lots of screen time. Having a story read to them can be a nice break and a good way to ensure that children are still benefiting from daily reading. It might be that your child needs a bit of one-to-one -one support to get them started on the task. A parent can offer this support by scribing what the child says out loud, so that the parent writes it down for them. And the next step would be then for the child to copy that sentence. Or the, ch the adult could ask the child questions and take notes, or even write down key vocabulary for the child to then refer to to support their writing. 
Please know that if, if it is taking you a very long time to complete tasks and you are unable to get all of the work done in the allocated time, it might be possible to reduce expectations in the short term. For example, just focusing on reading, writing and maths until your child becomes more confident before slowly introducing more of the curriculum as the child is able to cope with it. The Department for Education recommends three hours of learning each day. For older pupils, it can be really helpful again to set a daily timetable. Although ensuring that your child has some control over what the day looks like can be more motivating. So for example, allowing your child to choose, choose which tasks to work on first and when to take their breaks. Again, using timers, especially to break the task into more manageable chunks, can be really effective. So for example, you could set five maths questions to be completed in 10 minutes and then come back to, re to review the child's work offer reassurance and set them off to work again. Using checklists to help your child prepare for learning, for example, with a list of equipment they will need or perhaps by breaking the task into smaller chunks and having the child tick off each part once they have completed can also promote independence. It can also be useful to check your child's understanding at certain points. For example, once the child has watched the video and looked at the task, have them tell you what it is that they think they've been asked to do. If they're unable to explain or if their response is a little vague, you could watch the end part of the video or review the instructions together to ensure the instructions are clear. Importantly, if your child finds the work too difficult, please let the teacher know. This is really important feedback that they can take on board and address in subsequent learning sequences. Also, encourage your child to seek feedback from the teacher if they are unsure about a concept or if they need further explanation. You can do this directly by messaging the teacher on Google Classroom or by getting in touch via the school office. The Department for Education recommends four hours of learning each day for pupils in Key Stage 2. I'll now go through a few Google Chrome extensions that might be useful for you at home. So first is a tool called voice typing. This is a standard extension that is already pre-installed, so you don't need to find this one on the internet. It looks like this, and I'll show you how it works. So here I have a, uh, a Google Doc, and if you go up to the top menu where it says Tools, click on that one and go down to voice typing, this little um, icon will appear. When I click this icon, um, that will enable the voice typing app to start working. It will pick up on what I'm saying and it will type directly into the document. I'll give you a little example. Testing, testing, full stop. Voice typing is a useful tool for pupils who find it difficult to write or type at length, full stop. Okay, so you can see how that might be useful for your child to, to access if they are having a bit of difficulty writing. Important to note that they will need to then go back and edit to include capital letters and ensure that the, the text is correct. Another tool is called Speak It, and Speak It is a Google Chrome extension that needs to be downloaded. I'll show you how that one works. So if you go to Google Chrome extension, just by typing uh, Chrome extensions into Google, you'll come up with this web, web page. And in this bar here, the search bar, if you just type in Speak It with no spaces, um, a list of um, extensions will come up. They like little apps that work. So this is the one I've downloaded here. What this does is enables any text to be read out loud. So I have here some instructions. I am going to highlight the text and I'm going to right click because I've already downloaded the extension. I can click on speak it. When watching video, make sure to pay attention to the five locations we look at and the five sources of air pollution in each one. Use Kami to label the different locations on the North American map and briefly describe the source of air pollution. The good question is one the second page of the document to answer with a short paragraph. Enjoy.
And a final extension that I'd like to show you is called Ginger. Ginger, so you just type Ginger into the Chrome Web Store to find the extension. Here it is, it's a grammar, grammar and spelling checker. And you access it by just clicking up here in the corner. Looks like a little puzzle piece, it's called extensions. And just clicking on where it says grammar and spelling. And I, ha I, can t I can type directly into that box or copy and paste. And it should pick up any, any uh, inconsistencies with grammar that's highlighted here. And it gives an automatic suggestion. And you can also click on rephrase down here. And it gives you some other options that you could choose. So I hope that those Google extension um, apps are useful for you. But if you do need further help, please ensure that you attend the Google Meet surgeries and encourage your child to attend as well. The Google surgeries have been shown to be really effective at motivating and engaging pupils. So even if the child doesn't have any questions, please encourage them to attend each day. If your child is worried about asking a question in front of their peers, you could also send the question in ahead of time and the teacher can talk it through or model it, model the answer through the Google Meet. You could also reach out to the teacher, send a message to let them know about any difficulties that your child is having. You can. Um, get in touch directly through Google Meet, uh, through Google Classroom. And finally, you can get in touch with me or Mr. Ross, the deputy head teacher, to discuss your concerns. We do welcome your feedback and we are constantly working on improving our provision. So thank you for your efforts so far. We are really grateful for the support as we work to get this right for our pupils and offer a provision that is right for, you, for our families. That's all for now. Take care and I hope to see the children back at school soon.